Well, we, we do the board in such a way that, you know, we rank the players according to their talent and their, you know, their skill. And we take into a lot of factors um, besides just the ability to play, their character, their, their work habits, you know, teammates. Um, we do background checks, check with their college coaches. And he checked all the boxes. Um, and we're happy with our selection. He's very versatile, a player that could, you know, be very athletic and skilled, rebound, shoot the ball. He's long, um, made a huge jump from his freshman year to his sophomore year. Uh, he's always in the gym, loves to work. So if he can continue to make that kind of jump, you know, that he made from his freshman year to his sophomore year, then, then he'll be a good player from this league for a long time. Mitch, his ability to shoot the three, I mean, I mean as you indicated, I mean, it, it just flew upward from mm -hmm. freshman to sophomore. How much more equipped the way that the NBA is evolving? Is he suited in this game the way that you guys want to play? as far as his ability now to be a real threat from the outside? Well, I've seen him play now for, for the two years in college. I saw him multiple times last year and multiple times this year. And you know, he didn't play with the same kind of passion um, last year that he played with this year. And you know, his ability and his confidence to shoot the ball last year is not you know, what it is this year. Um, that's not to mention that he's increased his range. Uh, so I think that's you know a credit to the staff there at Kentucky and the fact that um, you know, talking to Coach Cal Perry, I, I think he he realized coming from high school to college that the next jump because he did put his name in the draft last year and he pulled it out ultimately after the workouts he realized that it's a bigger jump than he thought and I think the expression that was used was the light came on. And I got to go back to school, and I got to work a lot harder than I've ever worked in my life. Uh, so it's not just you know working on your body and your effort and practice and on the court and doing drills, but it's also working on the skill part of the game. And to his credit, that's something he did. He worked on his shot, uh, not only to become more consistent short range, but he moved his you know his range back, of course, which he'll have to do again. You know the NBA game. And the NBA three-point shot is very different than the college shot. So I'll have to continue to do that. But I think he'll fit in well with our guys, you know, our young players, our young core. Uh, he's got great character. He'll fit right in the locker room. I can see all the young guys hanging out together, going to the gym together, going to lunch together, um, you know, growing, you know, with this team as time goes on. So um, incredibly pleased and happy, you know, to have that kind of person on this team. Either way, yeah, we were. Yeah, very, very active. We had, you know, a lot of opportunities. As you can see, you know, there were a lot of trades, um, and we just felt, you know, taking into combination the price that you had to pay to make a move, and uh, where we felt we would end up at 12, that it just didn't make sense to, you know, give away that much of your future. You know, to get a player that we felt comfortable with, you know, that we that we're going to get at number 12. Uh, but yeah, it was a lot of activity. Um, as usual, you know, the last four or five hours before the draft, it really picked up. Mitch, you mentioned that you guys have the board and you slot the players obviously appropriately. Was TJ more appealing for his value as the best available prospect at that point, or, or was he more appealing for how you believe he could fit onto the we felt he was the best, you know, the, the best player with the best chance to be the best NBA player. You know, that's what we felt. Um, you might look at our roster and say, well, you have holes in here, it's in here, and here, you know, maybe in the backcourt with the uncertainty that we have. And you might say, well, why did you pick a player that's not a backcourt player? The answer is simple. You know, we felt that he can clearly be the best player to be the best NBA player, you know, in this franchise, in this league. What that's why we did it. I think he'll be um, a 3-4, you know, in this league. Guys that can go back and forth, you know, you follow our team all year long. You know that defensively there's a lot of switching, even from 2 to 3 and 3 to 4 and sometimes 4 to 5. Um, you know, he's a tough kid. You know, he's a strong kid. He's athletic. He's wiry. I think he's a lot stronger 
you know, than maybe he looks like in a suit. Um, so I think he'll fit in, you know, to a great degree defensively just as well as he was offensively. How would, in that regard, how would he blend with Miles, do you think? I think they can play together. Absolutely. You know, in today's game, a lot of times they just, we just roll out five guys. You know, sometimes none of them are taller than 6'8", and you just let them play. Take a couple more questions. Each while there were several other players who were projected to go higher uh, than DJ, like Nasser Little and some others. Was there anyone else that was really close and making it a tough call for you to make to go with DJ? Well, he was one of them. Nasser you know, Little? Yes, he was. You know, we had him you know, in a grouping, and um, you know, I'm not going to name the rest of the players, but you mentioned the players, so I'll confirm that he was in the group. And uh, those kinds of decisions are not made typically during the draft. You know, those decisions, you know, are made before the draft day rolls around. Uh, so it's not like it rolled down to the very last minute. Um, but now that you mention it, you know, his name was right in the mix. As, as were as three or four other players. What areas of the game will be the biggest transition from college all the way to NBA? The biggest, the biggest toughest like, transition for him? Yeah. I think the next jump. You know, I think he learned a lot jumping from his freshman year to his sophomore year. And this is another big jump. You know, this, is, this is a league where the players are bigger, stronger, quicker, faster. And with most rookies, that typically is the biggest adjustment that they have to make. You know, the game goes fast enough as it is, but at this level it goes really fast. And sometimes it just takes time to catch up and, and get into the mix of it. But I think that'll probably be his, his you know, and the size of the players, you know, of course, they're bigger. Um, but he'll, you know, his, his athletic ability and his skill level is certainly, you know, good enough to when he does catch on, he'll catch on quickly and he'll catch on for good. With the way the roster is right now, you mentioned he could play a three or four, possibly, DJ. How do you see him fitting in in terms of the forwards and stuff you have on the roster as, as it is right now? Well, we've got a bunch of players. And um, a, as I mentioned, you know, if you just look at our roster and the depth chart, you might say, well, you know, you probably could have picked somebody in the backcourt but, you know, we're not going to pick a player based on position. If it's close, you know, sometimes we go that way. But if we feel it's a clear-cut decision, you know, we're going to take the best player. And I mentioned all the characteristics that we feel this kid has. He'll fit in, you know, he'll fit in easily. And um, I would have no problem with our coach if we rolled out, you know, two guys at 6'4", 6'5", and three guys at 6'7", 6'8", and let them play. A lot of times that's how the game is played today in this league. Fortunately, you know, it wasn't played that way 40 years ago. <laughs> uh, in trouble. Is there a possibility you may trade again back into the first round or something like that tonight? Anything else you can do? Yeah, there's possibilities. Yeah, we've got a couple of things. You know, it's not easy to do. You know, they're all, all the GMs are good. They're aggressive. Comes down to the last minute sometimes, but we will have possibilities.